Hi, I'm Anthony, director here at Pixel Planet Studios. And I'm John, the director of photography here at Pixel Planet. And today we're going to look at a local commercial that we did for a bank. And the title of the spot is called Community. We're going to do some behind the scenes, talk about some of the camera equipment we use, some of the, the crew, the personnel, the logistics. Uh, so without further ado, let's hop in. So the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the opening scene. And this is where we meet our two characters. We have Jim and Carly, and Carly has these magical properties where she can essentially make a portal open up anywhere. And she's gonna take Jim around to all these different locations to let him know what a community bank does. And so there's a lot of challenges that come along with making sure that the practical elements that we're creating on set are going to match the visual effects that we'll be putting in later. So for this one, it was also really difficult to work with a giant nine foot portal that doesn't exist. Uh, we knew that the portal's color, we knew approximate size. So for this scene, we just did two M18s over on this side here, blasting towards this wall kind of making a little bit of daylight flying in. This is some natural light coming in here. And then what we actually did for this one to accentuate the green as they walk in the portal is just two C-stands with some quasar tubes facing this way so they'd actually be cast in green as they walk through the portal. And we had a, a quite a bit of mixed lighting on set and found it a real challenge in post to kind of match the bluish M18s and the funky overhead lights that we couldn't turn off as well as the daylight coming in here. So it was a really heavy uh, mix scene with a, a variant of colors going on in it. So we're at our second scene, and speaking of magic, we've now appeared in a tree house. The idea behind this was one, their logo is a tree, so it makes sense to be in a tree, but two, we wanted to kind of create this world where they would get in this magical tree and it could rise far beyond the height of any tree ever created in the history of nature and be able to show the breadth of what the community bank looks like from an aerial view. And so this was all shot in a sound stage, and we did this actually the morning before we ended up at that bank lobby to shoot that portal scene. And there were a, a lot of challenges here. One, because we're trying to recreate the sun, and two, we have a, a couple gags and things working in here where we need to be really diligent about whether we're choosing green screen or blue screen options. So for this one with the lighting, uh, this was all completely surrounded with green screen. And also this front post here did not exist. It was actually a draped cloth over some C stands just to create the balcony. We did that in blue and the background in green because uh, the part of this scene where he actually throws money out, we would have an issue uh, in compositing uh, if we had green on green. And then for the lighting breakdown, we had some eight by diffusion on this side. Uh, eight by diffusion on this side with two uh, airy sky panel 360s, blasting through them just to light them up a bit. And then actually back here, we had an M18 going through uh, a branch to kind of, and then I believe we warmed it up a little bit to kind of cast a shadow uh, on the edges. And you can kind of see it right here, that M18. And we actually grabbed a branch from outside so we can get a little bit of that cut to make it feel a little more intimate that they're actually there uh, and not on a sound stage with a green screen. So our third sequence, we find our characters, Jim and Carly, coming out of the portal into a residential neighborhood. And so this one was a reaction shot to essentially establish that Carly, the magical bank woman, has a relationship with some people who had already received a home loan through the company. Back here, we actually had an M18 to kind of help light this area here. I had a ton of bounce, maybe about eight bounces. The sun was cutting in at a pretty hard angle, which is actually, I think, nicer in a lot of ways, right, with the bounce, because you're able to catch it and kind of throw it where you want. Yeah, the light was feeling good because especially back here, coming through these trees looks really nice, and then we're able to utilize that to get it right back onto their faces and light them up and anything else we want to put in the shot and continue this cute dog. So now our characters have arrived at their last location. It's a small business. In all the previous sequences, you can see the portal in its full apparatus. Mm -hmm. And in this one, I believe it was actually Eric Martin, our gaffer's idea to what if we just play the light from the quasar on them and just have them kind of walk in instead of, especially it was, it was a really small location. So there honestly wasn't even room to put a full size portal into it. And yeah. I think it worked out really well. Yeah. So we actually had the same similar quasar tube set up just off to the side here. 
Uh, and then we added that with a little visual effects magic and then they walk in actually from this side, you can see that glow as they walk in. And then for the breakdown of this scene, it was really tight quarters. Um, so we didn't have a ton of room. I had to do ND lens down on a lot of these uh, with the background. Outside was rigged another M18 coming across and just kind of lighting up the background a little bit in here. Um, over here, really close against the line, we had a sky panel S60 with 216 frame of diffusion. Uh, and I believe we had a little fill, maybe even a little bounce over on this side. If we had a little scoop of bounce, again, with those beadboards uh, right down here. All right, take us to our final scene. This is the end where essentially Jim drops down and while he is certainly paying attention to all the great benefits of this bank, he is equally interested in cookies and all the sweets available. And so I remember this one being kind of a tricky shot. Yeah, it was funky. Uh, I didn't realize we were going to be shooting through glass, so I didn't have a polarizer, which you can use a polarizer to kind of change reflections. The glass ended up being curved enough and uh, ended up working pretty well for us. Um, but generally, I like to have a polarizer if I'm shooting through glass. This was pretty much, I think, the same setup as the beginning shot that we just showed. Still the same M18, and I believe we just brought down the uh, sky panel and the bounce. But what we actually did is we had a set of Astera tubes. And what we did is we actually set them, and you can kind of see it right on the corner here, and we magneted them all over the place and we set them to 10,000 Kelvin. So that kind of deep refrigerated blue. So that would differentiate it from the original shot. And the background still retains that great sunlight from the M18. So it, it kind of marries the two shots really well. Yeah. We definitely faced a lot of challenges on this project, but we also had some other unexpected things come up. Yeah, if you go to a bank, there are lasers in places that are above you. And if you raise a combo stand, it blocks the laser light. Uh, the entire alarm for a bank goes off in the building and the police are immediately called. And that only shut down production for like 45 minutes. Was it that long? It was a long time. Oh boy. And also we had the logistics challenge of we had a set built in the soundstage, and then we only shot for a half day there. And then we had to make a company move across town to the bank lobby after they closed their doors to customers so yeah. that we'd be able to film there and, and make the shoot work. Yeah, and an FYI company move is where you have to basically lift your entire production and move to a different set. And if you're new to scheduling, whatever you think a company move is gonna take, add a half hour. As far as crew, and equipment choices, there was a lot of discussion as to what did and didn't make sense. And where did we land on some of those? Our set pieces weren't huge, so it wouldn't take a mass amount of lighting, uh, but we needed to be nimble. Um, so I worked with my gaffer, Eric Martin. We had two grips on that as well. Yep. Um, Jada and Hillary. Jada and Hillary. So normally we'd have an AC on a project like this, but most of it was locked down. Uh, I'm experienced as an AC as well as a DP. Since we're doing so many visual effects, we ended up doing a lot of lockdown shots, so they're not working uh, out pretty well. We had some M18s, we had some S60 sky panels. We had a one ton grip truck just to make our movements easier. We also had a wonderful sound engineer and a dear friend of ours, Andrew Santon who helped out on it. Mm -hmm. And he did a great job, especially in some situations where we had road noise and other things like that. His uh, expertise really came in handy there. So we shot on a Ursa Mini Pro and then we shot on the Schneider Xeon lenses. I think they're super underrated. If you want crispy, clean, there's no better. Their pricing is awesome. That's a quick look at community. Some of the different things that we had to go through on production. Obviously, there's a ton of visual effects elements in this piece. So if you'd like to learn more about how we did that, I'm sure Brandon would be happy to do a video on that. Hey guys, I've been so busy working on this free tool for our Pixel Byte next week that I wasn't able to join the shoot. But if you want to see some behind the scenes of the visual effects that Eric and I worked on, Make sure to drop a comment below. That guy looks just like me. Like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye. I have that up. <laughs> <laughs>